Hi, I would like to start this little video by saying it's going to help you with our geologic columns. So you can think of a geologic column as an explanation of what you see if you've ever looked at the side of a mountain that's been cut away for um, them to build a road. You can see the different layers, the different kinds of rocks. And so we're going to look at three examples. This first one, this colored drawing represents, we've sliced down through the earth and we can see four different kinds of rocks. So the very top layer up here where the arrow is, is the ground you would walk on if you were climbing a mountain. And we've just sliced down into it so we can see what kind of rocks are, are visible. You can see the lowest layer is conglomerate because it's this blue spotted rock. The green layer is meant to be arcos. The layer made out of boxes is meant to represent shale. And this sort of blue purple layer is meant to be limestone. So we have our different layers. <clears throat> you will notice that some of the lines connecting the two are um, straight lines. So between the bottom layer and the one just above it, it's a straight line. But you will also notice that on top of the green layer, which is our arcos, we have a wavy line. And on top of the limestone, we have a wavy line. Those wavy lines are called unconformities. And they indicate in a drawing that um, layers of rock have disappeared, that there's uh, un, they're called unconformities because the sequencing of the rocks, the ages of the rocks doesn't flow naturally, that there's, there's some indication by the ages that there's missing rock. And it can be for a variety of reasons. We'll talk about those in a, a different video. So the steps that you use to draw the geologic column for this cross section, the first step is to list the rocks in order and we start with the youngest rock on top. So you can start at the top and you'll notice that if we start at the top, the first layer we come to is limestone. So that's the first one I listed. If we came down, the one below that is shale. So that's why it's below limestone in our listing. After that is our arcos. So it comes third in our listing. And then finally, conglomerate is our bottom layer. So we've listed our four rocks just in the layer that they've occurred in, so top to bottom, and the list goes top to bottom. Now what you do is you go back and you look at for things that have changed the rocks after they were laid down. So between the bottom layer, which is the conglomerate, and the arcos, there's nothing. But between arcos and shale, we notice this wavy line, which I've told you is an unconformity. And so we have to list that. And you'll notice the very top layer, there's a wavy line. So we have to list that. So we have our two unconformities. And you can see right here, I drew a little arrow. And the first unconformity comes on top of the limestone. The limestone had to be in place for something to happen to remove rock. And then because the, the lowest unconformity <clears throat> is between the shale and the arcos, that's where I put my little arrow. So the arrow comes out and we list it as an unconformity. Now there's nothing else that's happened to our rock layers, so we're ready to draw the G, what we refer to as drawing the geologic column. We're really just gonna list the events, youngest on the top, oldest on the bottom. And so if we come down, you'll notice on my listing, I went unconformity limestone shale, unconformity arcos conglomerate, and that is exactly the way I've listed them here. Now, one thing I've done is I've numbered these layers you number the rocks in a cross section the way you number children in a family. So the oldest is always number one. So conglomerate is one, arcos is two, unconformity is three, shale would be four, 
limestone is five, and the last, the newest, the youngest unconformity would be six. All right, so this is our geologic column. In some books or exercises, you'd also have little boxes beside them colored in to indicate the symbols we use for the rocks. By the way, there are standard symbols, um, but I did not use them. I used symbols that I thought would show up in the drawing. All right, let's look at a second cross section. In this cross section, you'll see that my layers, some of them are on their edge, they're not horizontal, and that we only have one unconformity, not two. So let's do like we did before. We'll list the rock layers in the order, youngest at the top, oldest at the bottom. So it still goes limestone, shale, arcos, and conglomerate, just like in the previous drawing. And now we have to insert our changes. So you can see that we have an unconformity. It's the youngest event, so it's going to go on top of the limestone. And then we can tell that our conglomerate is not a horizontal line, but it's a tilted line. So there's a tilt. But I can also see that the arcos is also tilted, and in fact, that the shale is tilted. So I have three tilted rocks but the lines between them are nice and parallel. So that means these three rocks were deposited horizontally and the grouping of three was tilted as a unit. The grouping was tilted. So we come in, we put our unconformity on the top and you'll notice that the tilt has to come after the youngest rock, which was the shale was deposited. So the tilt comes right here. And now we can list these, these layers and events in order. So we would go unconformity, limestone, tilt, shale, arcos, conglomerate. And you can see that's exactly what I've done. Last cross section. So on this cross section, we have the same rocks. But and we have one unconformity, but now we have something new. We have this black vertical bar and horizontal one. The vertical one is a dike, and the horizontal one is a sill. And you'll notice that they're connected to each other. So we do like we've done in the previous two we list our layers top to bottom. So it would go limestone, shale, arcos, and conglomerate because that's the way they're listed as we come straight down. And we have two things. Between the limestone and the shale, there's an unconformity. So between limestone and shale, I'm going to draw a little arrow coming out and write the word unconformity. But we also have this dike and this sill. Now, because the dike and sill touch each other, we assume they happened at the same time and we ignore the lower parts of it and only look at the part that's closest to the top. So you'll see that our dike cut through the conglomerate and the arcos and the shale, but it did not cut through the limestone. Our best guess is that's because the limestone wasn't there. So we will have to put in our dike after the shale, closest to the top, above the shale. So it's going to come right here between limestone and shale. And the sill is just going to tag along with it. But you'll notice that that is also where the unconformity is going to go, between the limestone and the shale. So which one is gets top billing? Which one comes closest to the limestone? Well, in our series of events, you always assume that the unconformity was a surface event, and it will always be the youngest if you have multiple events taking place. So the unconformity will be the youngest. So if we come down and we look, we have our rock layers. We've inserted the dike sill combo, but on top of that, closest to the limestone, we've also inserted our unconformity. And so now we have our layers. It would be limestone, unconformity, 
Dykesville Combo, Shale, Arcos, and Conglomerate. And we come down. And this is our last geologic column. This should help you in particular with an assignment and study questions and with the lab we'll do on geologic time. So we are going to stop the share and I'm gonna stop the recording.